Emmett and Lucy have evolved into special best friends that may even be sharing a house together. He actually builds her house at the beginning of the film. And, um, you know, you really feel that they have a real warm connection, deep connection that deepens further over this movie as they learn more about each other's sort of the other sides of each other. So we're all onions with lots of layers that need to be peeled back. And um, that's what happens between Emmett and Lucy in this movie. They see other sides of each other that they didn't know existed. Five years passes um, between the movies and uh, the, the main thing that's happened is the Duplo, I know everyone recalls, came at the end of the last film and the Duplo sort of created what we're calling uh, like our Mamageddon in, uh, in this movie. It's like a Mad Max version of Lego. And we have to, they're, they're sucking and taking sort of uh, different friends off into some other world, the Sistar system. And, we're trying to figure out why and where they are and try to get them all back and reunite all of us again. The visuals in this movie just take it to another level. You know, we I think we exploited things that everybody is familiar with in the last movie, whether it be like the Western landscape or the ocean, you know, or the outer space of Star Wars. We sort of all understand those. We have a common understanding of what those worlds are. In this movie, we get to go to a place that's clearly being created by some specific person's mind, right? And so we're getting a look at just like what is possible inside the mind. And it's the fact is, everything is possible. Anything is possible. You can have talking ice cream cones. You can have talking bananas. You can have bananas talking ice cream cones. You can, I mean, really, you can shape shift, you know? Nobody has to stay in one form ever. Um, I just, that's what's really fun about this new movie and the new visuals is that anything goes. There's no constraints on what you can imagine. Everything is Awesome was a huge hit from the last movie. I think we all uh, loved being a part of that. This movie takes it so much further. There's more music, more people singing. We bring back the idea of Everything is Awesome. We explain where that song came from. You know, we just really explore music and being in a musical and what that means and how joyful it can be in this movie. I know I have an emotional connection to Lego. It reminds me of my childhood. I'm very nostalgic for it, but also it brings out people's creativity. Um, it's a thing you do with other people often, right? So it's it represents sort of your quiet time and who you are inside, but also what you wanna show the world. So, I mean, it's just got a real resonance as a, as a building toy and just for people's sort of memories and nostalgia. If you love the first movie, this movie is more, more, more and expansive. And it's a little bit more loving. And I think the music makes it even more joyful, if that's possible, <laughs> than the first film. And it's really about something that's super relatable. You know, in the way that the first movie was about that sort of father-son relationship and your relationship to play and imagination and, and structure and rules, this is about human connection and... Um, interconnectedness and and understanding and empathy and all those things that we need to be closer to other people. And I love that that's what this film will represent.